So I wanted to make a video about frequency modulation and the maths associated with it. The information in this video will pretty much implicitly be presented in the context of synthesis. And if you're interested in synthesizers, you might have seen that frequency modulation is often presented in this dichotomy between linear and exponential frequency modulation. So we'll discuss both of these examples um, and we'll start with exponential. So I'll basically just give you one governing example that you can use to create a frequency modulated wave. And this function is really useful in music uh, in general. And this function is two to the power of n over 12. So that this has everything to do with the fact that there are 12 uh, steps in an octave. It has everything to do with equal temperament. Um, the argument to this function n is the number of semitones that we want. So we would take the output of this function and scale some frequency by it. Um, so if I want to scale something to get two semitones higher, then n would be equal to two. If I want to scale something to get an octave higher, then 12 or n would be equal to 12. Um, so we'll do a few test examples. Um, so 2 to the power of 12 over 12 would be equal to 2 to the power of 1, which equals 2. Um, great, again, because we know that 12 steps is an octave, and we also probably know that an octave is a factor of 2 in the upwards direction. Um, if n were equal to 0, that's a 0 semitone shift, which means we should be staying in the exact same place. 2 to the power of 0, or anything to the power of 0, is 1. So we're scaling our original frequency by 1, and so it doesn't change. Again, exactly what we want. And then here's the big important part. Negative 12, so 10, or negative 12, so 12 uh, semitones downward, an octave below where we're starting. So that would be 2 to the power of negative 1, which is equal to 1 half. And so... This is literally an exponential function. The argument is in the exponent, 2 to the power of n over 12. Um, and it's, it's nonlinear. So when we used positive 12, we got a delta of 2, because the output of the function was 2. And when we used negative 12, we got a delta of a half. The output of the function was 1 half. And that means that for any positive n, the output of this function will be greater than 0. And for any negative n, the output of the function will be between 0 and 1. So all possible inputs that are negative give you some output between 0 and 1. So that's great. First of all, this function never gives you a negative number in its output. Uh, and that's that we never have negative, well, we probably don't want to use negative frequencies. Um, and so inputting a negative n indicating a shift in semitones downward from the original, giving us some positive input, or giving us some positive output, where the output is just a fraction, is exactly what we want. Um, and so if I draw these test cases up on the board, yeah, that line is straight enough. Um, we get something that would pretty much look like this. Um, and I guess I've gotten ahead of myself a little bit, but what we're ultimately going to want to do is get all these values of n so that we can modulate something. So instead of just leaving it at n, we're going to use 2 n times sine omega t, where this omega is our modulating frequency uh, over 12. So the output of this function would look like this. And again, for our test case where n was equal to 12, um, meaning 12 semitones and therefore an octave, we'd get a factor of 2 in the positive for we'd be going from 1 to 2 for all of our positive n values, 
and we'd be going from one to one half for all of our negative n values. Um, and n, because of the way I've written this, I guess, isn't itself necessarily negative, but it's sometimes being multiplied by a negative number because sine just oscillates between one and negative one. Um, so this numerator itself will become negative half the time um, and generate this part of the cycle. So this is kind of similar to if you just took a regular sine wave that went between, had a magnitude of one or an amplitude of one, the shift of one, and then another sine wave with an amplitude of one half and a shift of one, and just kind of took this part of it and took this part of this one. It's kind of the same output, but it's not exactly the same output. Um, this is the really accurate uh, or precise way to generate our modulating wave. But this is just our modulating wave. This isn't, we're not done yet. Um, so we have something that will be creating a scale factor of two sometimes and you know, moving up and down, and at its lowest point, creating a factor of one half sometimes. And that is the scale factor for our original frequency. So we want to take this wave and multiply our frequency argument by this wave. Um, so that means we're going to take this function and put it inside of another sine function. So, you know, just our starting frequency might be sine of omega carrier times t. Um, but to make this something that is modulating over time, frequency modulated, um, then we're going to multiply it by the function we just wrote. So that's omega sub m for our modulating frequency over time. Um, size. Um, so again, n here is the number of semitones by which we want to modulate our original carrier frequency. And this is our exponential case. We're literally using an exponential function to scale a carrier frequency. It's nonlinear because for positive inputs of n, um, we're creating values above 1. And for negative inputs of n, we're creating values only between uh, 0 and 1. And so our delta, in this case, is, is 1 in the positive direction, and it's 1 half in the negative direction. So it's, it's nonlinear. We have more travel in this direction than we have in this direction. Um, so this is the type of modulation you would use for vibrato because we perceive things, we as humans perceive things in this nonlinear fashion. That's what this method is predicated on. It's an octave up and it's an octave down. But if we move to the linear case, we're, we're throwing that away. We're modulating by some constant um, number of hertz or some constant percentage. And I'll start with the constant number of hertz case, which is a little bit tricky, and maybe it's tricky because it just doesn't make a ton of sense to do. Um, but to modulate something by a constant number of hertz, um, you need an argument based on the carrier frequency. And that's because 50 hertz is a larger fraction of 500 hertz than it is of 1,000 hertz. Um, it's 10% in one case and 5% in the other case. And so we're going to now create a linear function, which is just going to be 1 plus n over f0. Um, so this is linear. That means you know, when n is positive, it's going to give you, um, you know, this, the exact you know, inverse ratio of when n is negative, instead of having this disproportionately um, shaped wave about one. 
So this will give us a constant modulation in terms of hertz. So as F0 gets larger, um, the ratio is going to get smaller and smaller, which is kind of why this method doesn't make sense. If we're constantly modulating by 50 hertz, for example, you know, down at low frequencies at 100 hertz, 50 hertz of modulation is a ton. That's an octave in the negative direction. But up at 1,000 hertz, 50 hertz of modulation is, is almost nothing. Um, and so that brings me to an important aside, which is that, let's go back to that 100 hertz case. If 100 hertz is my carrier frequency and 50 hertz is my um, modulating frequency, then you know, I'm going to go down 50 hertz and up 50 hertz. And of course, going down 50 hertz is an octave, but going up 50 hertz from 100 hertz is not an octave. In fact, it's like six or seven semitones. Um, so when we're doing linear synthesis, whether it's a constant number of hertz or a constant percentage, we're always traveling more in the negative direction in terms of octaves. In terms of our perception, we're traveling more in the negative direction because of how we logarithmically perceive things. So, um, it's just an important aside. Um, so this will, this will give us a regular sinusoid. And again, I've drawn the sinusoid before I've written the function, but in this case, it would just be our n times sine omega modulator t over f naught. So the sine function is the thing that's going to take this numerator and sometimes make it as high as the value 1, sometimes make it as high as the value negative 1, or um, could be greater or less than 1, because we're scaling it by n. Um, so for positive uh, values of n, you'll have something above 1, and for negative values of n, you'll have something below 1. Um, you don't want to do a constant number of hertz, but just a constant percentage. This function just gets even simpler, and that just looks like this. One plus n. And now n is no longer in terms of hertz, like it was here. n is in hertz. A constant frequency change, and is a percentage for constant percentage change. So that's really simple, but it makes sense. So if we want constant 10% change, then we're going to use 0 0.1. Um, and same as here, we use 1 plus n sine of omega modulator. Right. So if we want to vary by 100%, for example, I keep throwing out these numerical examples. I think they help some people um, internalize the information. If we want to modulate by 100% frequency, um, then n will be 1, and we'll have, at the extremes, we'll have 1 plus 1, which is 2, and 0. And so that's another thing that's cool. Um, we're we're going down to DC, and so we can all we can modulate uh, an infinite amount of percentage into higher frequencies, but we can only modulate a hundred percent lower, right? Because a hundred percent lower is always zero. So, um, yeah, that's just a, another kind of interesting aside. Um, yeah, I hope this was useful and interesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to ask.